And also how to keep the film open, that it's not a closed form. You know, through that juxtaposition and those little eruptions that occur with different mediums and different colors. Um, the, the whole form of this rug, you know, I can't even really enter it because there's no hole for me. So there have to be little mistakes or little spaces that the viewer can then enter. Even if you're questioning so much, maybe, that you can't keep going with the film. So the film is made for multiple viewings. So yeah. the second time, you pay more attention maybe to some other area than... Well, um, because I may immediately start questioning. Because all the voices are, are even. I mean, all of the different voices are even. It's really hard to find a, you know, a, a So maybe that to... requires a suspended disbelief during mm -hmm. the time of the projection and allow that resistance to build in you as you hear all these little details of the lives. But that is the immediate intuition, right? That intuition of resistance that isn't so radical. I overheard you speak with Elaine earlier today that you wanted to talk about something that was radical, but deep within me I didn't find it was radical. It was very intuitive, sort of always there. And this was this really definitely inside of this resistance to sort of enjoy the paradise and paint, but to certainly resist it at the level that I think you're trying to sort of present here. Yeah, I think I've really said, <laughs> let's do something. Yeah. You know, let's let's leave our studies for one day a week if we need to. One hour, Wolfgang for many. You know, even though you did um, make that message come out, I, I was thinking that it also kind of addressed the thing about sometimes you feel like you have to justify painting and justify art. I mean, while, well, you know, Matisse was writing the letters and all this was going on, he was still like, look at the beauty of the surrounding. So it sort of, it worked on that level for me too, because sometimes I feel like you almost are pressured to justify yourself if you don't want to do something mm -hmm. about a resistance. I mean, or, you know, if you don't want to make a piece that's political in some way, mm -hmm. you know, is that... Mm -hmm. Feel almost guilty sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. you can do both. You sure. Know, so. And there's room enough for every. Yes, yeah, so I think it, it made that clear there. too. That it's just painting. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with just painting. I mean, you know, you could question. You know, I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe he was helping somebody. I mean, there are. You never really know what somebody's doing. Yeah. You know, and, who are we and red and roses. Red yeah. and roses. Yes. Um, I, I think the film does a really cool job of not just showing like, the possibility, but maybe even the necessity for uh, the woman warrior. And I, I was just wondering like, what you uh, made of the Pentagon's recent attempts to uh, take women out of service roles, considering that, that we've now recently discovered how much of you know, the, the US war machine depends on uh, female active soldiers. Well, I'm against the whole Pentagon and the whole war machine. I'm against that in an army. <laughs> Women are men. Um, I really feel like they haven't progressed much in terms of evolution in learning how to communicate and how to mediate and how to listen to one another. And that nationalism and boundary choices in, in all kinds of areas, religion as well as ge geography, have taken precedence and it has something to do about greed and a non-evolution of the human species. Um, and so it's extremely depressing. Um, you know, after all these years and after all these wars and after great leaders like Martin Luther King and like Gandhi, who have shown us other ways that we don't are not following those ways. You know, and that our great lead, the leaders that we elect are not the great ones. They're the mediocres. The president of the country. That is not a good ending, so we have to uh, yeah. another question. <laughs> La last one, yeah. Uh, so, can you give a sneak preview of uh, your next project? Yes. <laughs> it's a good ending. Same the night. <laughs> the preview is lesbian resistors. 
<laughs> Why? Because I searched all through Kasi for a lesbian resistor, because I want to bring my sexual preference into the film as well. What did the story that I heard? Nobody cared about sexual preference or sex during the occupation if you were resisting. You know, you worried about your life. You didn't worry about sex, and it wasn't something that you even had time for. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> he, watches the, he watches the Hollywood movies. I mean, <laughs> So it's a film about the surrealist uh, artists, lesbians, half-sisters, uh, Claude Cahan and Marcel Moore, who live on Jersey Isle when she's occupied for four years as a stepping stone to England. It's very close to France, about 11 miles from France. And they continue to make their art, but their resistance activities are so creative. They are so, uh, they're like an art form. And that's how they put art and resistance together. So that's the new one. Okay. Thank you very much.